Welcome back, viewers. Got a couple things here to disassemble. And of course, they're sealed objects. Got a filter dryer, which came out of a ice machine. If you talk to Manitowoc, Walk, they'll tell you that their dryer is better than a standard dryer because they have a screen in there to protect any backwash, if you want to call it that, when it goes into a harvest. We're going to cut it apart and see if there's any truth to that. And then I have a TXV here that uh, went bad, had uh, real high superheat and high subcooling. It would not work in the heat mode. It was a heat pump slash geothermal. I've replaced quite a few of these. We're gonna see how it looks on the inside. You, you can see the screen doesn't look very good. I actually cut it out of the system. I didn't sweat it out. I don't think that happened on trip home. I uh, turned it back to the truck, but good grief, that looks like it's all the way around. And then we got a reversing valve. This is a little bitty one. Big enough you can stick your whole freaking thumb in there. It's an inch and an eighth, I think, or inch and three eighths, one or the other. But uh, we're gonna split that puppy down the side and take a look inside of it. I gotta be honest, I've never really split a TXV open like this before. Usually I like to take them apart and take a look inside uh, when you can unbolt them. This one was not able to be done that way. You can see the plates right there on the left hand side where that's the diaphragm. And that pushes in there against the piston there. That right there is a spring. There's the plunger coming down to there, and you can see the nasty crap in there. I'm gonna say that screen was pretty nasty. So the question is, why was there so much crap in a clean system that has never been opened before? Well, if you know or heard, at one point Copeland had some issues with uh, some oil uh, that they put in the uh, compressors. Now they claim that a lot of these aren't affected by it, but um, it was a, uh, an oil that was made to keep the compressor from rusting while it was setting around to be used for manufacturing. Well, it ended up having some ill effects once they got the uh, PoE oil in there. And uh, it seems like I've got a lot of these TXVs that get gummed up. And uh, don't know for certain if this was one of them that was affected by it, but I've seen this happen over and over again. Now, obviously, some of this garbage in here is going to be from uh, cutting it with the uh, grinder. Yeah, you can see that crud is in that screen. Problem is, it was not serviceable. Can't take it apart to clean it. So, you're going to replace the whole thing when you're doing it. These are the springs. Push back up on the diaphragm. Right there. And that's your port. And its job is to equalize it out. And the unit shuts off. Gotta admit, this is the first one I've had like this. The little bulb there is definitely a little odd. Normally it's like a pin. There's the whole number on the, on the uh, valve. Just cut apart the Danfoss. There's the felt. It goes up against the screen. See it comes in. Okay, I'm just tearing a living snot out of this thing. But you can see what the desiccant looks like, which I'm sure quite a few have seen. I'm gonna keep on busting this thing out of there. And looky there, felt on the other side. So they weren't kidding. They actually have felt on both sides. Yep, yep, got a fine mesh screen there. That is the outgoing side. Get the felt there. And you had the desiccant after behind it, and uh, had the felt on the other side, which was that piece right there. I do know that the sporulin, basic sporulins, do not have that felt on both sides. Okay, and now we have the reversing valve. That one's going to be a little more interesting. You can see the U-bend in there. That's, that's a big old burger. This is on that... Well, it was 30 ton unit, so it was uh, 15 ton a piece. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can't split it down, down the side here and then down the other side. Tell you what, guys, it makes a heck of a mess. Not real. I haven't done this too many times, so it ain't very good cut. But, got her apart. Check that out. Ain't that fancier hog snot. 
Hell yeah. So, you've already seen these, I'm sure, cut apart on a picture diagram. But here is the tubes that shift back and forth. Blows the refrigerant one side or the other. It slides back and forth. Which, this one was stuck. It's kind of like a metal. That's... Now that's rubber. It's got a rubber feel to it. And here's the little diverter, just loops it in over. So that's what you got. Now this don't look too good. Check that out. I would say that this right here was supposed to have probably white plastic all the way around it that don't look good i would say that's probably some of the reason why it might have failed i could be crazy but that don't look good and this piece here stays stationary as you can probably imagine you can see right there is a little port and the other port should be right there there it is there's that port so basically depending on how this little burger here shifts. It's basically a miniature version of what the big part is. Shifts this way or that way, and it directs the flow from here to there. And that's uh, what your solenoid does when it's on there. That piece there should come out. Here's the uh, other half of that piece. Okay, I pulled that piece out, and you can see right there, it went down in that area there. That right there, basically shifting back and forth just like the big part. Real scientific, I know. You can see where she's been rubbing back and forth. My love shack of Nim. Yes. Well, what did we find out? Well, we found out our screen was plugged up. For whatever reason, for material of some sort, did it in. It's not serviceable. Luckily, the new one is able to be taken apart. This here, I'm going to say that plastic crap is somewhere in the system. How was I to know? I highly doubt that's formed by a machine that way, because that looks like hell. And, um, yes, there is a difference in the dryer the way it's built I mean Mexico so there is a difference in the dryers they're not crazy just wanting to sell you their dryer go figure and then there was a thermostat here there was word that it might have been sticking we can pop it apart ain't a whole heck of a lot to that you can check the contact points on it what the heck let's tear it apart okay now we got this part coming apart if you noticed Basically got spring mechanisms in there. That kind of makes click on and off of your switch mechanism there. Now you can see right there, looks like it's gotten a little burnt. And the contact points don't look really good. There it might make it a little better. You can see where been arcing on that piece right there. Contact points are inside there. Let's pull them out of there. And there's the contact points. Now I didn't condemn the switch so I was kind of curious whether it was really a problem or not because it was running when I got there. And uh, there's a couple other things I found too but that definitely it's not good. You can see how that could stick on or possibly not make contact. But you got all the amperage of the compressor going through these little dinky contact points, which is why a lot of them are now using isolation relays. So you're not putting all the uh, amperage on the little dinky switch. I guess the only thing we haven't cut apart is that TXV bulb. So let's go ahead and take a peek at that and then we'll wrap this up. All right, that's kind of interesting. Got the bulb open. It looks to me like there's some sort of felt in there. 
Let's see if we can pull that out of there. We tore it apart. That is a piece of felt. It does smell a little funny. But, um... Really ain't nothing in there but a big old chamber with that felt thing in there. Probably because it's liquid refrigerant, I'm sure. Of some sort. They never have told us exactly what it is, as far as I know. But uh, that's what's inside there. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll cut the uh, sensing bulb just to see if it was dead when I'm done. Just to kind of see, you know, was it the bulb that went bad? Was it the piston stuck? Was it something else? Who knows? But there's our little mess. And uh, yes, we did wear not only safety glasses, but we wore a shield. I wear mine uh, like that. That anyway, I got the hard hat and the safety glasses, and I can take that off if I don't need it can't show you the other side because I don't want you to see any names. We're in the witness relocation program right now. And yes, that's my cheap junk grinder for at the house. My DeWalt and Bosch are uh, on the truck. I didn't feel like using battery operated when I had outlet sitting there. Mm -hmm.